So, um, like I said, my name's Denise Carr. I'm gonna answer a lot of your questions about scheduling, and then I'm gonna hand this over to Mary when we get to clinical. Uh, the order of your schedules. Oh, and one more person is gonna be here at four, Robin Tardiff. She's student support, um, so we'll take a break when she gets here. Um, order of courses, you are gonna be heading into 100. Uh, and then the next mod after that, each one of these commas represents a new mod. The next mod after that is gonna be 125. These are both fundamentals courses. 140 is pharmacology. If you'll notice there's a slash, not a comma, they run at the same time. Yes, we know it's really hard. We're telling you right now so that you can prepare. Go work extra in 100. We know that it's hard. We know that everybody has a mortgage to pay. We've heard this all before, so we're telling you right now, save up so that you don't have to work as hard when you hit to that point. We understand. Everyone's made the argument before you guys. So this is gonna be a lot. Uh, pharmacology is a very hard course. We are going to, um, we've been working on revamping it. It is meant to prepare you to be successful in clinicals, um, but it is, it's pretty intense. The courses that are in bold, the red are your lifespan courses. Um, yours is actually gonna be changing. Uh, you're gonna be the first course to go, you're gonna be the first cohort where we're taking the specialty courses, and rather than it be a 50% med surge, it's gonna be just the specialties. That way it's, we can focus and you're not, when you have the med surge, it's just med surge. That was based off student feedback. These all have seven weeks of clinical, seven 12-hour days. The lifespan courses are gonna be on either a Monday or a Wednesday. We'll tell you when it's gonna be, you don't request from us. Um, the specialty courses, uh, they can be on the weekends. They can be on the weekends. They can be on the weekends. Um, especially OB because everybody in the northern half of state of Maine, the only place we have is eastern Maine. Um, 125, that one's a different color, that's long-term care. We've already got nursing homes set up that we use. Please don't solicit any other ones. We have ones in the area that we use. We use Ross Manor, we use um, Bangor Veterans Home, we use uh, Brewer Rehab and Orono Commons, which the Director of Nursing actually is doing the um, clinical instructing for us there, so that's very helpful. 100 and 140 do not have a clinical component. 100, 125, and 180 all have a lab component, which we had you sign up for. Lab is twice a week for two hours. And we are letting you, because you came to orientation, you get to pick. Do you wanna come from eight to 10, or do you wanna come from 10 to 12? Uh, and that will pretty much carry through for all the labs. Labs for 180, because these two classes are, have labs in the morning. Labs are for 180 are in the afternoon, either from uh, noon to two or two to four, well, 12.30 to 2.30 and 2.30 to 4.30. For the most part, we keep the same. If you were the earlier lab, we'll keep you noon to two, but we can revisit that as needed if there's room. 275, that's your partnership course. It's 120 hours of partnership that you have to get. We, you can put in where you want to go. We have been asked to collect feedback. The stronger students will probably get, stronger clinically students will get the requests for ICU and ER honored. But they've been asked to ask, we've been asked to give input for the folks that are asking for clinical rotation, for clinical partnership spots in critical care areas. Um, we use, that's the one we branch out a little more for. We'll use places down by uh, Portland. We'll use, we've used Callis, we've used, so that one we have a little bit more leeway with. Um, 120 hours of that, I teach that course. Your weekly schedule, for the most part, like I said, your clinical is gonna be a Monday or a Wednesday. We've stopped using Augusta, Maine General so much because for the most part, students are in the Bangor area. Um, and again, so it's mainly gonna be a Monday, Wednesday for your lifespans, and then you're looking at, what's our specialties right now, like Monday, Saturday? Uh, I think we're Friday right now. Friday. But I think it's gonna land on, the summertime we can get a Monday. The summertime we get lucky because we're the only school at the, at the hospital, but usually during the Monday, year. We got Friday on like in the summer. Friday in the summer. But during the school year, we're kind of relegated to the weekends. Um, 125, it's a four-hour clinical twice a week. 
And then uh, the rest of them, it's 112 hour. This is updated, it's now 120 hours. Classes, lab simulation, all the rest of the classes are gonna be on Tuesday and Thursday. Your classes are going to be starting at noon and then getting progressively earlier as you move through the program. Katrina's classes are at nine and Debbie's classes are typically at 10.30. They're pretty standard at this point. We are gonna do pharmacology, that's the harder class before fundamentals. That's based off student feedback. Potential schedule, I've been asked by admissions to give a potential schedule. I'm very leery to that because people will take that as a contract. This is a potential schedule. This is, gives you an idea of what it might look like. Um, and you'd be in a two hour block twice a, twice a week. Expectations for students. So, There is a lot to this. So nursing is notorious. If you look up undergraduate majors, which ones are the hardest, nursing is always gonna be in the top three. And um, I pretty much, a lot of my day earlier, part of this day was talking to nursing students that nodded at orientation and were so excited to start the journey and then it was, this is very hard. Um, you will come out of this and get a job making about at least 70,000 a year, over six figures if you wanna work four days a week but you are expected to know what to do when things go wrong. Even if your friend or your CNA and the nurses, they just play on the computer what, that you see while you're doing your CNA stuff, they are getting paid to know what to do if things go wrong. Um, so you have to put some effort in. It's about three hours per credit. There's anywhere from five to eight chapters per week of reading. It's a lot. Um, flexibility, we try not to make changes. It's very stressful, especially with schedule and I'm, I'm more apt, if, if groups come to me and they say, can we change something, it has to be almost a unanimous consensus or I don't change it, because that's not fair to the people that have made their schedule. Um, but we do try to be a little bit flexible with certain things, but some stuff is out of our control. Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, arrange backup for childcare and logistics. Storms happen, we're heading into snowstorm season. Thankfully, by the time that you guys hit clinicals, we're gonna be kind of out of it. But um, backup childcare especially for the exam policy. Please don't think I'm not talking to you guys when I say this. It has to be an immediate family or self-emergency with documentation. That is because we can't have people talking about the quiz and then you get extra time to study and we have to have documentation. We're gonna hold people to that. We do not have the schedule in the bandwidth to be doing quizzes here, there, and everywhere. Um, plagiarism and cheating. I don't, please don't test me on that. No phones in the testing room. No, these are not open book no quizzes. These are not like microbiology. We will walk around. We're gonna see if you have your notes in the, in the class. Um, smartphones or smartwatches are coming off. You can make switches. Uh, so that said, we can make switches if there's room. And kind of what I do is I'm not, and I'm not gonna ask this of Mary either, if you guys want to make a switch, you need to make it happen. Just like at work, if you want to switch days, you need to make it happen. If you come to us and say, so-and-so has agreed to switch with me, I'm fine with that, I got, but you guys need to make it happen. We used to do a question and answer session with the current students. We stopped doing that because it was kind of overwhelming and, and it, this isn't the time. You guys, it's not the time. Um, I think what we're gonna do is record them at some point and provide it to you guys about midway through 100 because that's when we start getting the questions of how do I study, what resources do I use, that's when that information will be more receptive. But usually we ask them things like, how do you balance work life? How do you, how do you work? Like we tell people, we're not gonna be like other schools and say you can't work and make policy about that because I'm realistic. I'm just saying that you can't come to me and get mad at me because something changed and work made you make a schedule. Work needs to understand that this needs to be your life for about a year. I understand that people have kids, you can't shut kids off, I get that. Have backup childcare. Uh, staff support, um, Robin Tardis will be coming in and talking with you. She is a good resource, she's got an HR background, so um, she's really good at uh, like resumes when you get to 275 and before then even, when you put in for partnership, you have to, uh, you have, to have a resume. She's really good at helping to build that, to make it pop. Not that you're really gonna need that, because most of you, there's, there's a dire need for nurses. You, most of you will have jobs before you get to partnership. 
Ginger is also really helpful uh, in terms of, you know, if you're, if you're needing help with studying habits or like checking in, she's really good at that. If you need help with test anxiety or uh, learning the content, any of the instructors will, will meet with you. We will go above and beyond. If you're showing up and you're coming to class and you're putting the effort in, we will go above and beyond and we will meet with you. Um, but you have to put the effort in. Tutoring, we can get tutors set up, ask for that early. Week seven of an eight week mod is not the time to ask for a tutor. So ask for it early, no, reach out when you need help early. Um, ask faculty to meet with you. Accommodations. If we have to have a documented, um, basically diagnosis, there's a whole process and procedure. It can take up to a month to get through. So that's another thing we don't want to wait until the 11th hour to do. If you think that you might need accommodations, so like, um, not that I really want to throw out suggestions, but like ADHD or anything like that. If you had accommodations in high school or anything like that or previous schooling, um, that is one that Robin Tardif, that she can really help you through that process, but it, is, it does need to be documented. It does need to follow a format. And she can maybe speak to that a little bit. So clinical requirements. Attire, and then Mary will come up and talk about Sentry in a second here. Um, read the dress, the handbook, student nursing handbook for the dress code. Uh, questions I get asked a lot. So these dangly earrings, every nurse has them. That's how you can pick them out along with the uh, dance go shoes. But uh, don't wear them to clinical. Even though your best friend who's a nurse wears her dangly earrings, you'll be the one that gets it ripped out by somebody with dementia. Don't wear it to clinical. Uh, you can wear wedding rings, as um, long as they're not too bulky, it's, a, it's an infection risk if they're huge diamonds. Um, tattoos, as long as it's not anything, I personally don't have a thing against it, but it has to be in good taste. If it's not something in good taste, we'd ask you to cover it up while you're at clinical. Um, fingernails need to be kept relatively short because that can harbor bacteria underneath it. We'd ask that you not have you know, the long acrylic nails or anything like that. Um, and this is going to be the same policy when you start working. Your shoes, we ask that they be white, preferably washable. That's for your sake. Uh, okay, you will get stuff on them. Um, I heard that sometimes it's hard to find white shoes in male, men's sizes. Black is fine as long as it's professional looking and uniform. Uh, our color, it's called Galaxy Blue. Amazon has it. You will need it for lab. Your semi, your, your, spacing on the word here. Clinicals don't start until 125, but you will need it for lab. So order them now. They don't take very long to come in. Galaxy Blue, I recommend you get two pairs of, of clinical tops and clinical bottoms. White scrub top, closed toed shoes, optional scrub jacket. A watch with second hands. So if you're going to get one that's cute and it has Roman numerals, make sure you know how to read Roman numerals. We were doing a simulation one day and the student didn't know how to read Roman numerals. Uh, you will, in a code, have to be able to use your watch. Uh, and a stethoscope as well. We don't care what kind of stethoscope. It can be as expensive or as cheap as you want. There's no specific color or anything like that. Just need a stethoscope. Uh, so Mary, do you want to come up and... Actually, Robin, do you want to come up and... Robin peeked in, yeah. So Robin is student support. And I kind of glossed over the accommodations process, but if you want to. Hey guys, welcome. We're really excited to have you here. Um, my name is Robin Tardiff. I'm the campus director here in Bangor. Can you get this one? Just, oh, we're making can. just for people who can't come. Perfect. Which way is up? All right. Hey guys, I'm Robin Tardiff. I'm the campus director here at Beale University here in Bangor. Um, my role really is to help make sure that you guys have a great experience while you're here. We're here to help problem solve um, and get you basically once you're here and in classes and get you to graduation and then into a good job. So you'll, you'll notice around here I wear multiple hats as does most of our staff and faculty and uh, we all were small but we're mighty. So I do cover student services. I work very closely with Ginger Gladowski. For any of you that have been here for our, um, for the the pre-recs, the AMPs, and the, the gen eds part, you probably have heard from Ginger. Um, she is very much involved in um, how folks are doing. She's here to help 
She lives in Colorado, so she's not here on campus, uh, but she is uh, available. And a lot of times because she's in Colorado, her hours are extended past 5 p.m. because um, she's two hours behind us. So um, it gives a lot of availability for our student services department to be able to help you guys as students. <clears throat> so really our role is to, again, we wrap support around you. We work directly with the instructors and the program directors um, as if you're experiencing issues or having difficulties, whether it be inside the classroom or outside the classroom. Because we all know that things outside the classroom can very much impact our performance in the classroom. And so we're really here to help problem solve, um, put some structure in place, um, assist with tutors, those types of things to help you be as successful as possible while you're here, and then move into uh, a, hopefully a, a nursing role as an RN. Uh, I also wear a career services hat, um, and so I can help with resumes, cover letters, mock interviews, all those things that you need. Um, I'm guessing none of you in here have been an RN before, right? So you're, you're gaining those skills in the classroom, and so then how do you present this new set of skills to an employer? You may have medical experience, but it's not RN experience. And so how do you discuss your transferable skills and all the things that you've done in the past, whether it be medical or non-medical, and work in uh, and now become an RN? You, you'll get the credential and you'll have the education, um, but there, you're, the more you can relate those transferable skills, even if it's customer service, you know, you're dealing with people. And so um, that, that's what I can help with once you get towards the end of your program. Um, in the beginning of your program, Ginger and myself are here again to kind of wrap support around you to help you be successful. Uh, as I'm sure you have heard, this is not an easy program. Um, it is fast paced, there's a lot to it. Um, and it's a different, the, the thing I can share, I think I've never myself gone through it, but from the students that I've worked with, um, it's, di it's a different way of studying than anybody has ever, than, than your typical studying. And so uh, it's just a different way of learning. And once you master that way of learning, you, you pretty much get in the routine and, and can move with the flow. But sometimes getting into that flow um, can be difficult. And so we're here to help support that. Um, and, but I am going to say we will not work harder at it than you will. <laughs> we're here to support. We're here to help but we're not here to do it for you. So we're, we're here to give you the tools in order to help you be successful. I also, um, as they said, work in the accommodation process. I'm the accommodations coordinator here at Beale. And so for folks that have maybe had accommodations in high school or had an IEP, that information does not automatically transfer to college. And for many of you, there's been some time since high school. New things can develop. There can be always, you know, we're here to, to again, help you be as successful as possible. And so there, that could mean that you need an accommodation, whether you have a documented disability and you need to look at how to set yourself up for success. That can look like many different things. A lot of the accommodations that we've helped put in place is longer time on tests, could be testing in a quiet space. Um, but there is a process to go through that. It's not just get a doctor's note and, and I'm good to go. Um, there's, there's more to it than that. Anytime you say ADA, that means there's red tape because it's a government agency. So I can certainly help you through that process if that is something that you feel that you need. And again, but IEPs from high school and, and, and those types of things don't necessarily automatically transfer in. Um, so I can help you through that process as well. Um, I am right here on campus five days a week. I'm here Monday through Friday. Um, and you're welcome to stop in. I'll, you'll see me in the cafe. You'll see me out and about. Feel free to stop in and say hi. Um, and I may stop in and check in on you guys as well just to see how you're doing. Um, we're really excited to add cohort 16. Cohort 16. So congratulations. Uh, we're excited to have you here and we look forward to the next 14 months. Pull up your bootstraps, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Um, but it, it's well worth it. The, the changes that I've seen in the students that have graduated and moved on um, are amazing. So I, I'm excited to see where that will bring you in the next 14 months, and I'll be there to cheer you on at graduation. So uh, again, if you have any, any questions now? Awesome. Well, I look forward to having you. Classes start January 2nd, but is that a Tuesday? Is that, are they Tuesday, Thursday? Have we don't gone, we haven't gone over yeah, that yet? 
Yep. So holiday, holiday on Monday, we celebrate New Year's Day, and then classes will start on Tuesday. So I look forward to seeing you all on January 2nd. Um, and if I can help in any way, please let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm here to hopefully help you have a successful journey. So thanks. Thanks for your time. All right. So my name is Mary Ellingwood. I'm your clinical coordinator here for the program and the administrative assistant to the program. First, I'm going to mention to you, because I'm afraid I'm going to forget, uh, your badges. You want to use Velcro to put them on your white scrub top. I've been told the blue has a tendency to run, so you don't want your white scrub top to turn blue. Uh, if you use the Velcro, you can take it off when you do the laundry. Put the prickly side on the badge and the soft side on your shirt. If you put the prickly side on your shirt and you wash it with anything else, it's going to steal all the fuzz out of your washing machine. So there's your friendly hint about your badges. Um, first thing she's got up here on the list is Sentry. You should have received an email with your Sentry packet attached to it. It's actually called like uh, Beal Health Requirements, and then when you open it, it says Sentry. Sentry is the online company that we use to track all of your health records and your immunizations. There are a lot of students that go through this school and it's impossible to keep track of all of you on paper and make sure everybody's up to date. Um, so in that packet on that first page, it gives you directions on how to set up your account. You actually go to like mystudentcheck.com to set up your Sentry account. So make sure you follow the directions on that page. There is a fee associated with this. It is a one-time fee for your entire time here at the school. Uh, the immunization tracking, I'm, I'm gonna get the prices backwards, but the immunization tracking, let's say, is $39.50, and then the background check is $35. It might be the other way around, but oh, awesome. Um, so you just make sure you go in, set up your account, pay the fee, and follow the directions for uploading all of your documents. And in that packet, it tells you what is needed. Uh, I will go over the immunizations real quickly if anybody wants to take a note or follow along in their packet if you printed it. Um, it is necessary to have all these immunizations done before you can set foot in a clinical site. Your course, uh, your catalog for the school has just been updated that these immunizations and your sentry requirements are required for NU100. Um, obviously, I don't think I told you that in like, you know, more than a week ago. So just please make sure you have everything completed. Like, let's aim for week four of the mod. So that would be the end of January, beginning of February. Uh, so for immunizations, you have to have your hepatitis B series and a titer proven immunity. So if you happen to have a titer that comes back negative, meaning you're not immune, you are allowed, you can go get a booster vaccine and then re-titer. If you happen to have a negative titer again, you can get a letter stating that you are a non-converter and you do not have to continue getting the vaccines, but you do have to try one more time after that initial negative titer. Um, if you do not have that series completed, the hospitals are not going to let you in their building for clinical. And it does take up to six months to complete. So make sure if you haven't had it in the past, I would walk out of here today or tomorrow morning and call and make an appointment for that. Um, if you've already had it done and you just need to get a tighter, then I would go ahead and get that scheduled too in case you're going to need a booster vaccine. Uh, you need two doses of MMR or a titer shown immunity. Same thing for varicella or chickenpox. Uh, uh, tetanus has to be current within 10 years, and you're going to have to have a current flu vaccine. So January, February, March. You will need a flu vaccine for clinicals in March. Typically, um, they say the flu vaccine runs through like March or April. So the facilities are not going to let you in for a long-term care unit without your flu vaccine. At this time, the COVID vaccine is no longer required for you to go out on clinical. If something changes, I guess it could still, but hopefully not. 
Uh, other than that, you need a TB test. This is a test to make sure you do not have the disease, not a vaccine. So this has to be current within a year. Uh, you can get what they call a two-step PPD, where they implant it in your arm, you go back and you have it read, and then you have to do that again. So again, this is something that's gonna take a little bit of time, so make sure you leave yourself enough time to get that done. If you don't want to do the implanted version, you can also have a blood draw done, and then there's like the T-spot test you can do instead. Please make sure you get all of this information into Sentry. I don't send it to Sentry for you, which I think sometimes is a misconception because people will bring me all their stuff. Um, this is so we don't have all that paper. Uh, so get your account set up, make sure you meet all your requirements, fill out the access form that's in your packet, and read down through all the requirements. You do also have to have a CPR completed. It has to be American Heart Association CPR. It has to be current. Um, during NU100, I will send out a link to an online um, CPR site that you can do the written part and take the test, and then you um, print a certificate. Make sure you keep that certificate, and at some point we will be um, having a hands-on test out on campus for you to participate in, and then your cards will be emailed to you. Uh, background checks, uh, those also need to be completed before you can go out on clinical. Don't raise your hand and tell me now. Uh, if you have a misdemeanor or something small on your record, it is most likely not going to affect you going to nursing school. If there is a felony on your record, please come see me or Denise in private or shoot us an email, and that is something we can discuss before you go much further ahead. You do have to have a separate background check done with the nursing board before you sit for your NCLEX. Make sure you tell them of anything that might be on your record. If you think something's been removed, verify that it's been removed before you tell them there is nothing on your record. Um, they're not, if you've got a misdemeanor or something on there, that is not gonna prevent you from sitting for your exam not telling them about it and then having them find it is what's gonna cause the problem. Um, clinical stuff, this is all going over everybody's head for right now, I realize that. But I'm just gonna let you know, um, we do have this website that most of the hospitals participate in called mcnplacement.org. Once you start getting your hospital placements for clinicals, you will be getting an email from me um, that explains this website to you, that tells you how to go in and what you need to do for it. Please pay attention to the email, pay attention to the deadline dates and the directions. If you do not complete these steps, I can not allow you to go to clinical. Um, it is requirements of the hospitals. They have, it's where they store their paperwork, um, like their confidentiality forms and their life safety checklist and their HIPAA training. All this stuff is on that website. So you guys, I'm gonna send you, hey, you're going to East, Eastern Maine for your clinical next mod. You have to have you know, these documents turned in, this training done by this date, or you can't go. And that's pretty much it, because if you go much past that deadline, that doesn't give me enough time to verify the steps and then let the hospital know that you're cleared for them to clear you to go to clinical. So there's a good chance if you miss the deadline, you're gonna miss at least one clinical day. You're only allowed to miss two. So you don't want to miss one because you didn't read an email. You're only allowed to miss one. Oh, I lied. You're yes. only allowed to miss one. Yes. Don't. Oh, yeah, I just up on oh sorry. I, I thought that used to be the rule. Maybe it changed no, or maybe I was always wrong. One, don't miss your one because you didn't read my email. Because <laughs> you miss clinical, you're going to fail the program. If you miss two so, we fail that, that class. So you, you don't want that to happen. Um, if you have questions about what I send you, please reach out and let me know. I've been known to make a mistake or two in my life too. I just sent out a whole clinical email and told students to fill out their tickets for the hospital for the wrong term. So if something looks wrong, <laughs> please let me know. Um, so all right, clinical, century, you went over scrubs, went over badges. 
So you got badges for your uniforms. You're going to get badges with your name on it and everything. We work on that during 100 lab because you don't technically need those until you go to the clinicals. So we'll work on that during 100. Anything else I need to go over that I'm blanking on? I think that's it. I was just going to All right. Um, yeah, so just to reiterate, uh, so MCN, file that away. It has to be done once a year. Um, it, it has to get renewed, so like it runs out January, June 30th. So if you're, I think you might be the lucky cohort that has to do it to go into the hospital for May, and then you have to repeat it when it resets in July. It's not a big deal. It's just a headache. You'll get through it. Um, uh, background check. So when you get that packet, we used to have that be part of orientation. It's not super good. It's not a good use of everyone's time. Um, so I'll say go through that packet, and you do have to buy the background check, and you have to buy. You definitely have to buy the the package uh, to upload your immunizations to. You upload it yourself, like she said. Don't send it to her. She'll kick it right back to you and say upload it. There's a contact person there, a contact email if you're having issues. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just kind of walk your way through it. If you don't have the money right now for the background check, you do need it by the time you go into the nursing home. But if you do need to split it up, you can do that. Uh, you will need it at some point, and it's good for the year. Uh, oh, the clinical mess. So we are trying to, what we'll do if, like, for example, we're heading into snowstorm season, if there's a clinical, um, if, and, and my, go ahead. And if not, I made, a, I made a quiz in Canvas so that we have it electronically as well. Uh, this is just our documentation, so when you come back and say, well, I didn't see that policy, we'll have, like, yes, you actually signed an attestation that you, in fact, did. Um, so pretty much the biggest, uh, so if you miss clinical, I think the standard I'm going to do is if Bangor, school can, if Bangor School Systems cancel school, we'll cancel clinical. If they deem that it's unsafe, and they usually do by 430. So if you travel from Callis and you know there's a storm coming, you need to make arrangements. Um, because if it's bad at the coast but not that bad in Bangor, there's a chance clinical will still be on. That's really where you learn to be a nurse is in clinical, so I'd like you to get as much as you can. You can only miss one. If you, like, something happens, like you're, you're the, you go on a Monday and we don't have clinical on Memorial Day, we do have seven weeks of an eight-week mod. We can have you go week eight to make that up. However, if something happens, and I wouldn't have this happen too often, but if something happens that you miss two, if we have the room, we can switch you into a different clinical. Um, so it's not the end of the world, but try not to have too many chaotic things happen in the same mod. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh, experience in lieu of clinical. How many of you are... Uh, direct patient care, so that includes CNAs, um, you've worked as a CNA in the last year, 250 hours or more, uh, long-term care, adult inpatient, so not mother baby, I'm sorry, um, intensive care, hospice or home health. Perfect. So when 100 starts, hold on to, actually, put your, is there at least eight people that raised their hand? Perfect, that's a clinical group. So um, what we'll do is in 100, I will talk with you guys about it. Uh, but it's basically we do a form that it's called experience in lieu of clinical. So where you guys have had the experience, you have that hands-on care, we're going to give you credit for that. And so you still have stuff to do, but um, you have to do a test out with our lab instructor. And she, um, and don't feel like you need to memorize this all now, just know that when it comes to 125, you don't have to do the six weeks of clinical. You show up one week and you do test outs to show that you can do a head-to-toe assessment. And then you meet with me for 30 minutes every week while the other groups are in clinical, and we go through a clinical judgment building exercise, which is basically a case study. This was our way of kind of um, giving back and giving you guys credit for the experience you have. IT login. So the other thing we used to do right now was, um, and we can still do this to an extent, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I sent it on purpose. I didn't send you a form letter with all of the information about orientation because I wanted to make sure that everybody could get into their email. That is how we will communicate with you. We, we have had the argument that I didn't, get, I didn't receive the communication, something's wrong with my email. That doesn't fly. So you need to make sure that you can get in and access your BL email. 
Sherry Rice. She is your person. She can help you out. Um, so make sure you can access your BL email. You're probably all accessing Canvas now because you're taking courses. Those of you that have um, transferred in your gen ed courses, make sure you can get on Canvas. Our first Tuesday, so not the first Tuesday because that's the first day of class. The second Tuesday, you're going to have a quiz. It's going to be in room six, which we're going to show you. You're going to sit down and you're going to log into Canvas. I recommend that you have your password memorized. I say this at the last two orientations. We inevitably have somebody that gets mad at me because I start the quiz because they couldn't get into Canvas. So please get your password, have it memorized, get in there, practice, make sure you can get on the computer and can get, can get in. We will not hold the quiz for you. Um, Sentry. Mary's got that packet. The background check, it's kind of extensive. It's like filling out the last seven places that you lived, the uh, last places you've lived in the last seven years. Um, your Evolve account, if you can go in, it's no big deal if you don't get to this piece because we'll get to it for 125, but if you can go in and change, uh, it should be the email you used when you signed up for your HESI. If you can go ahead and change that to your BL email, that will become important when we enter 125. And then the last thing is I would today, because we're going to be done a little bit early, I would go down at the end of the tour and I would practice logging into the computer. If everyone else has claimed a computer and you're like, I just want to go home, that's fine, especially if you live in the area. But I would at some point before your classes start, make sure you can get on a computer because it takes a little bit of time logging in and sometimes we run into people having issues. Sherry Rice can help with that. Um, but uh, and, I, and I sent her a list with all of your names, so she should make sure she has all of your, your access. Uh, there's a paper on the wall in room six and room seven that tells you there's a format like last, last name and like last four your social to log into the computer. This is where your, your Canvas password and not being able to log into, the log into the computer, that's where people have issues on day one of the quiz, the first quiz, stresses people out. Don't do that to yourself. Get out, get take care of it early. Um, that's Sentry, that's what that looks like. I think that's pretty much it. We, so I started to write out the whole program. I'm gonna lose you past the first two mods, so just focus on the next four months. 100 is either gonna be eight to 10 or 10 to 12, Tuesday, Thursday. It's whatever you signed up for. That's your prize for coming and, and taking time to show up. Um, and then class is going to be, I'm going to say 12 to 3.30. It's a three-hour class. Lisa may either say, let's go right into class and get you out of here, or she might give you a half-hour break um, in between. You can leave if you are in the first group and you've got two-hour block. Most people choose to stay and study. This part's pretty easy. This is when you want to pad your bank account. Heed my warning now. This is, this is a monster. This is hard for people, OK? Um, this is when you're going to not want to work. So you're going to have clinical either Monday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Friday, two days a week, and it's going to be from 6 in the morning till either 6 to 10 or 6.30 to 10.30. I think Nancy does 7 to 11, but it's a four-hour twice a week. And then you have the same lab schedule unless you're like, hey, can I switch it? I'm not going to switch it on you. If, but if you're like, hey, I want to switch, that's fine. Um, and then class, you're going to have class. This one's going to be farm. Farm is the harder class. We're going to have you do it first. That's based off feedback, so you're not sitting here at this time of day trying to learn about pharmacology. Um, you're going to do farm, take a little bit of a break, and come back and do fundamentals too. And then Thursday, same repeat, only you don't have farm. It's just fundamentals, and you're out a little bit early. This is a very long day. Do you guys know how many hours that nurses work? About 12. Most of us work 12-hour days. Um, this is a very long day, but it's... We do that on purpose. I've talked to Lisa. We may end up splitting this into an hour and a half. We may do that. Um, but what we don't want to do is, is we want to kind of keep this as close as we can because we understand some of you do need to work. So we want to give you that Friday that you can work and get your three days in, maybe on the weekends. Um, this is the schedule of how you guys are going to go. 100, 140, 125 run together. Uh, 180, 215, lifespan one, lifespan two three, and four, and this is your partnership class. Make sense? Any questions about anything or everything? Yep. Um, for the lab, yep. did the 
those start on week one? Yes. Okay, so first day of first day of class we're having lab. Yes, that's a really good question because you'll have lab before you have class. We've run it that way a handful of times now. So Nancy is, uh, she'll meet you there. You show up in the lounge at a little bit before eight, and she'll usher you right in and tell you what to do. There's nothing that you need to do ahead of time. Do we bring anything to labs? Uh, you want to wear your uniforms. I would bring uh, your watch. I would bring um, a pen and pen and paper, maybe notebook. But you can. You wouldn't need it by then. That's more when you start doing assessments. But and we have what you need in the lab, and we give you a pen light and things like that. But you can bring it if you want. I'd bring a lunch. We have a refrigerator out there to to put lunch in. McDonald's and the gas station are right around the corner. People like to run down there. So. Somebody else had a question? Do you have a specific color for the scrub jacket? White, preferably white, yeah. And yes, we get it. It's white washes me out, and my car looks so much better in black. And I know, but just it, it, we like it because it's bleachable and it's kind of a standard thing that nursing students wear white, and it's kind of a standard thing. So when you're at the hospital, um, Lisa is really big on please look presentable. I know that your coworkers probably wears, wear a hoodie and then their scrub bottoms, and I know other nurses probably do that. Please, it puts you in the mindset and it makes you feel like this is a little bit more real, so we ask you to wear your, your uniforms. You don't need to wear them to class if you want to switch out of them. So, uh, what else? What is the Monday, Wednesday? This is your four-hour clinical when you get to 125. Okay. You might be Monday, Wednesday, but we also have, uh, like, um, uh, Ken Mitchell is still water, and I believe George does Wednesday, Friday as well. So you might be Monday, Wednesday, but I got Friday scheduled because it would be um, Wednesday, Friday. Everyone's going to be on a Wednesday. Again, we'll give you that schedule. Don't tell us your schedule. Um, we, we can't accommodate 40 people. They'll be talking 6 to 10 at night. In the morning. In the morning. In the morning, yep. Because that's when most of the activity is, because you guys are going to be getting in and doing ADLs and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. We've done it at night, and it's, it's very it's a correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is the one. That, and that's the other reason we did it is because we warn you. That's why we built this into orientation. Pad your bank account here, because this is what gets people, is it's a lot. Um, but if we can get some people that they can test out of and get a little bit more time back, and plus the hospitals like it because you usually got your experience there, and now they can get you to come work for them for, for a little bit more. So makes everyone happy. Um, oh, another question I usually get, the book. Potter and Perry were on the 11th edition. That's the fundamentals book. Uh, some people like to buy the hard copy book. Potter and Perry, Nursing Fundamentals, 11th edition. We will buy it for you. We buy you the ebook. You come into class, you come into Canvas. As soon as you click on SurePath, uh, that SurePath is basically lessons that we use. It will say SurePath when you get access to the course, and it will take you, and the, the readings are right in the weeks. So we will give you the ebook, but if you're a person that you like the hard copy book, you can buy that, um, but we will give you the ebook. Um, there is a HESI prep book. That if you have friends that have gone through the program or nursing students that you know, HESI Prep, 7th edition, we buy that for you, okay? Um, that's because we use HESI all the way through the program. It's been very, very helpful for students to be successful on the HESI, and we work that into the books that we buy for you. Um, so don't spend your own money on it. Other things we don't buy that I would recommend is a Saunders Prep book, like an NCLEX Prep book. It's good to buy now because it will help you kind of have some scaffolding to attach the information to. It's a lot that you learn in nursing school. Um, so I, I'm going to stop short of recommending the nursing students when we have them come in and talk to you in 100 um, and do a question and a question and answer session. They might recommend some some things to study and different ways of studying. I'm going to stop short of officially having the program recommend something because if it says something wrong. I don't want that to be an argument of why you should get points back on the test because we recommended simple nursing. and So I'll let other students recommend it, but it's on their authority, okay? Um, what else? I can't think of other questions that usually come up. Do you have a preference whether you place 
Um, I think we put on the left, right. On the left, yeah, okay. On the left side. Do the Velcro because the colors will run, so that way when you wash your shirt, you can take the, the, the patch off. Um, I think the biggest thing, that, the biggest issue that we run into is please respect the deadlines. It makes it a headache for Mary, and I've given her permission. I'm like, if you don't meet the deadline, by the deadline she gets, and they're reasonable deadlines. It's usually like the Friday before something starts and then you get it in over the weekend. It's, it's, it's too much gymnastics for her because she, she does this for the nursing program and the medical assisting program. It's just a lot of extra steps for her. So if you don't meet a deadline, then we'll have you miss that first day. Um, and the other thing with the testing policy, I assume in a room full of this size, most people are honest, but you have to put the disclaimers out for the people that aren't. So just so that no one can say you weren't told, it is not open book. You may not have your phones, you may not have your smart watches. Um, we give you paper to write your, you can brain dump once you get in there on paper with our letterhead. Um, don't take test questions out of the room, like don't write the things down and, and disperse them. We can easily write new ones. We are writing our own now. We do write our own test questions. Um, we're working very hard to tailor the, question, tailor the courses and make them so you learn something, but it's not overwhelming, but it's still Rigorous. I think that's, yep. No, and that's kind of, I, like, when I say I treat everyone like, like an adult, I don't want to run it like a kindergarten class, but um, we do ask you not to bring your phones into the testing session. Um, and, and during the cold weather seasons, we may ask people to turn their pockets inside out because people will put, we're not stupid, they put their phones in that little pocket and then they sit in the back of the room and they shimmy down. Like, just please don't insult us our, and our intelligence and we won't with you. We'll be reasonable with you. We get that things happen. We get that fall, kids fall down and they hit their head and teenagers make it to the national championships. And, and you can always take tests early. We will work with you. Like, we've had a lady, her kid made it to the national championships. And we worked with her and came in and proctored exams. So we're not heartless, but just please don't. Everyone's tried it before you. Just be honest. You know, nursing is the number one. I think 21 years in a row we've been uh, most trusted profession. So um, I guard that very, very carefully. I grew up with nurses in nursing uh, at the hospital. So when I send graduates out, I kind of most feel like you're representing, you know. So I want to hear good feedback. And we do. We get a lot of good feedback on our on our students, so um, I think St. Joe's told us, they said if we see a Beal resume, you go right to the top of the hiring pile, so um, any other questions? Usually it's about books, schedule, and clinical, those are the big things that we try to hit, so all right, so we'll, we can probably end the recording, and then I'll do a tour of the campus, and uh, I recommend that you log on the computer and then you're free to go.